the Energy and Climate Minister, Chris Bowen, joined me a short time ago. Thanks for joining us this Easter Monday. Uh, let me ask you about this trend of the EV purchases from the outer suburbs of capital cities. Are you surprised by the trends you're seeing in terms of who are buying the most EVs right now? Happy Easter to you, Kieran, and your family and all our viewers. I hope everyone's had a really good break. Um, no, I'm not. Uh, Kieran, I'm not surprised by that. I, I live and work here in Western Sydney and you just look around and you see big increases in EVs all the time and hybrids, um, people making choices and that's what it's all about. You know, Kellyville and Rouse Hill are the highest selling suburbs for EVs. That doesn't surprise me in the, in the slightest. It's a bit of a myth that uh, some in politics um, uh, perpetrate that uh, EVs are only for inner cities or only for rich people. We want more Australians to have better choices including here in Western Sydney and in regions. Uh, we want people to be able to make informed, good choices. That's why I put out the data today about EV charging, you know, 100 new fast charges in the first quarter of 2024, because even over Easter, as I've been around with family and friends and community members, people have been talking to me about uh, EVs and thinking about buying an EV, but a bit worried about whether there's enough charges. So it's important to remind people and show people that actually charges are rolling out very fast across the country. And you're talking about the number is going to double, is that right, over the next 12 months? Is that the sort of pace we need to see for yep. the uptake that you're planning for as a government? Yeah, I mean, as I said, you've seen two-thirds of the EVs on the road today were sold under the Albanese government, so EV charging needs to keep up because take-up is, is going up very fast. Now, we've got 90% more charges out there than we had two Christmases ago, so that's a big increase, but also, as you said, EV charging or EV take-up is increasing exponentially as well. So we've got to make sure we keep up. So this is just a bit of a quarterly update um, to say 100 new charges in the first quarter. Our driving the nation policy is really only just starting to hit its strides now because we're putting charges in where, in many instances, there's not even an electricity grid. So that takes some management and some planning, which we're doing with the NRMA. I opened the new charges in Alice Springs and Tennant Creek and Catherine, a few weeks ago, we opened more in South Australia uh, during the week. Um, so people need to know that if they want to take those long drives, most people will charge at home when they're driving to and from work. If they want to take those long drives, mm. uh, either whether for family or for, or for work, that we are rolling out the charging. Federal government, state governments, uh, some local councils and private sector working together to ensure that we increase the number of charges available. When you, you look at the broader issue here, there's a real divide now before the next election. Nuclear on the one hand from the opposition, the solar sunshot that you announced last week at, at the Liddell power station and renewables from your side. I just want to get you to respond to the assessment that renewables have stalled uh, and the number that people are referring to is the Clean Energy Council number. Utility scale investments in 2022 was six and a half billion dollar investment. The following year only one and a half billion. Uh, have investments in renewables stalled due to the public concern around transmission lines particularly? Uh, there is some uh, issues that we are addressing around transmission lines and better social licence, but actually we've seen um, we've seen some encouraging figures out of the uh, investment figures. We've seen a record investment of uh, batteries, big batteries, for example. We've seen 5.9 gigawatts invested in those figures, uh, so that's good. But we have more to do, and hence uh, we've uh, announced we'll have the capacity investment scheme to really underpin that uh, dispatchable renewable investment, um, because that's as countries around the world are all on the same journey. We're all competing for the same capital and the same uh, supply chain inputs. So uh, our capacity investment scheme, which I'll have more to say in the next couple of weeks about uh, the details of the auctions, but uh, it's going to really underpin more uh, renewable investment, more dispatchable renewable investment. And this is the way of the future. You know, um, in Europe, just for the last year, for example, they installed as much renewable energy every week as one uh, nuclear power plant um, every week. So uh, this is all pretty impressive figures around the world and we're competing in that environment. The way of the world is to get on with that investment as opposed to this nuclear fantasy that some, uh, some propose, which is slow to roll out, um, you know, many, many years and the most expensive form of energy available. Why you, why you would do that with these wonderful renewable resources we have in Australia is beyond me.
Well, the AGL company is obviously backing your idea with the Solar Sunshot initiative. At the various other sites where the coal-fired power stations are being phased out, uh, Ted O'Brien is confident that others will be of a different view. What's your read on that? Well, come on and tell us your policy, Ted. I mean, you've been talking about it for 18 months and AGL's made it very clear, as other energy companies have, that they're not interested in nuclear because why would you roll out the most expensive form of energy? Uh, you know, AGL is the owner of the old Liddell Power Station site. They're turning that into a renewable energy hub, including the manufacture of solar panels, um, that which will employ more people there than were employed at the old Liddell Power Station in one factory. Um, that's a big step forward under our solar sunshot policy uh, that we announced uh, during the week. Now, um, if Mr O'Brien is so confident that Australians want the most expensive form of energy, uh, want the energy, the form of energy which is so slow to roll out many, many decades, and they want it in these six large nuclear reactor locations spread around the country that they've now said that they're going to do. They spent two years telling us going to have small nuclear reactors. We spent two years reminding them they don't exist anywhere in the world. Um, it's not actually a real thing. Um, it's, it's small nuclear reactors are a concept, they're an idea, but they're not actually being done anywhere in the world. They've now acknowledged that. They're going to have six large nuclear reactors spread around the country. Tell us where, Mr Dutton, and tell us the cost and tell us how long it's going to take and release all the details and then we'll have a proper discussion about it. They've been, you know, flim flamming around for the last 18 months on it. Uh, we've been rolling out policies in that time. It's time for Mr Dutton to get on with it and, and announce the full details of this nuclear fantasy. Just finally, um, an assessment of who might follow Prime Minister Albanese in the top job. Your name is mentioned in that report in the SMH today. I wonder, do you, uh, do you have a leadership baton in your knapsack? Uh, uh, this might be something journalists are interested in. No, this is the most important job I've ever done and probably the most important job I'll ever do, being Minister for Climate Change and Energy. And I think you'll find Anthony Albanese and the entire Cabinet are all just focused on our jobs. It's a bit of fantasy football um, from journalists and that's fair game. That's OK. But uh, I, I expect and I will be, we'll be working with Albert, Anthony Albanese for uh, many years to come, I hope and expect.